bef before, uh, since I said we, we had time for two more questions, let me turn the, the floor over to the former Secretary of Education, uh, Secretary Lapus, to ask the final question. This is the final question, but I'd like to take exception that uh, it's only now that finally <laughs> the good policies in uh, education have been implemented. I think during my time we implemented the policies that were that were sound and are still being continued by uh, Secretary Luis. But um, I've been trying to chase the, the crooks of the problem, I guess, in the, in the country. I've been in manufacturing for 20 years and run the biggest German multinational where at the time when you said productivity was low at uh, uh, to minus 252, uh, our production in the Philippines was uh, at par with Germany and it took us two years to set up a plant in Kulim, Malaysia where we started the uh, export processing zone there. This is in the early 80s. So selectively, uh, we, were, we were still way ahead and at par with the best in the world. Um, I think we have been, just a little background on the history, I think we've been uh, a very faithful colony. I agree with uh, Jerry, Professor uh, Sikat, that uh, we must start with the fundamentals, like the Constitution. Do you know that uh, there's still a, a, a law that if an American supplier bids for products in the Philippines, the American supplier will, will be treated like, a, like an American, given a 15% uh, uh, price premium. In other words, if there is an open bidding, World Bank funded open bidding for a product, and uh, an American bid it against other suppliers. If his price was 15% higher, that's considered at par with 100% up to now. And then that is a 19, 19 uh, pre-war, I think it's a pre-war legislation. It's a flag law. But uh, that's just a, a backgrounder I think uh, in the 60s, for example, we Filipinos would go to Taiwan to buy LP records of the Beatles at one dollar for a complete set of six. Because in the Philippines, it cost a lot more. Because of uh, the Filipinos, the Philippines was paying for royalties, copyrights, on everything imported, mostly from, from the West. And that's Taiwan. And when Reeboks and Adidas shoes came about, we were flying to Korea to buy fake Reeboks and Adidas. Uh, these are, I'm mentioning this because um, the Filipinos acted like um, uh, Americans. Uh, uh, we were consuming American goods. Uh, like a, like Hawaii. The only difference is that we were not part of mainland mainland U.S. We were we were complying, while Korea, um, Taiwan, uh, the other countries were 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 not good boys. We're we're not. You could even sue them in the world court. But. To, and we were already driving uh, flashy cars here, Cadillacs, etc. And uh, I studied the land reform in Taoyuan, in, in, in Taiwan. And uh, there were, they didn't have cars. There was complete uh, closure. Nobody could go out of Taiwan. So uh, I, I would say that we're, we, we're more nationalistic or more restrictive than those. They were very. Uh, restrictive and nationalistic, but once they joined the the world order, they were. If it, if this was boxing, they they were already 
ready, while we were not supported uh, even by the World Bank on, uh, to develop our steel industry, our petrochemical industry. I was also in legislature for, for three terms, and uh, the kind of, when the world, the WTO was, uh, was implemented, our importations were from home consumption value uh, and SGS. Importations were, became like the Bureau of Internal Revenue based on honesty, transaction value. And there was no reference valuation to question the transaction value. Billions, billions and billions of taxes were lost there. Now, I'm speaking too long, but uh, the, the subjects get to be interesting. Um, it's, it's like, it's the world order. I, I think, uh, you know, the stronger country can't blame the big countries for protecting their interests. But uh, now that there's regionalism, uh, by 2015, ASEAN would be at no, no duty among one another. I think we're seeing a semblance of, uh, of uh, some uh, level playing field. But looking at most of those years, I think uh, it was expected that those who ruled set the rules. Thank you. Well, le le let me... Uh follow up uh, uh, on, on that observation. Do, do you think regionalism is a factor that will promote or uh, hinder the, the development of, of the country, the competitive position of the country? Because there has been some concern expressed about the ASEAN-China uh, free trade rel uh, relationship. No? Uh, th thank you. I, uh, I have been uh, uh, I, I wanted to say something about this issue when I began hearing about ASEAN, WTO, and so on. I, it, my own thinking about this is along the following lines. I believe that uh, the rules that we set together enable us to live, and, and when we become, we become part of them, enable us to work through those rules so that we can, we can uh, do our best using those rules. So uh, when ASEAN began to move towards cooperation, uh, one of the things we I discovered as a member of the uh, of the negotiating panel, I I was the I was some, the economic minister for the first five years for the Philippines on the uh, on the forming of the ASEAN economic cooperation. What we discovered basically was that as soon as the regional, as soon as regionalism became a factor, building up our expectations among ourselves, the rest of the world began thinking more about what we could do. So they be, they felt threatened to some extent. I think that's so. Uh, that, that's one factor that I think uh, came out. Suddenly we had members of uh, the European group trying to see us more often. Then they were thinking about what they would be able to do. So in effect, uh, the rules that we set together enlarges the scope of our activity and makes us even stronger. But that, that enables us to become, uh, I mean, that also constrains us because as a member of the group, we, we have to follow the benefits as well as the as well as the limitations arising from this. This is also true with the way we, we have become with, uh, a member of the WTO. I think uh, the only problem with, uh, with the very large negotiations that are uh, being done through WTO is that it's very hard to come to terms immediately on the main issues. That's why WTO progress has been limited. And uh, the reason why regional groupings become more important and why regional groupings plus other regions enable the world to go through a larger a larger geography rather than the total geography. Linda? Uh, yes, um, 
I think regionalism will definitely help. We have been waiting for it for over 40 years. Um, so it's not very, you know, unless things change. Um, from a business uh, point of view, uh, b businesses would love it to be one, re you know, that, that's, that's one of China's advantages, right? Because you have, re you know, China has different regions, but they're all one, there's, there's some, there's some uh, provincial uh, differences, but standardization um, of uh, trade rules, uh, harmonization, etc. That's uh, very important. Actually, in the last few years, intra-ASEAN trade and investment has increased quite substantially, just in the last 10 years. So it, it's slow, but it does happen. And what it does is it gives businesses choices, uh, more choices of where they can locate because they don't have to locate in a place. Like right now, you want to locate in China because you can get everything in China. You could now think of locating in Vietnam because you can import, you know, Vietnam, you cannot have everything from Vietnam, but you can import, say, 60, 70 percent from other ASEAN countries, similarly the Philippines. I mean, that's the way I think, um, I think will happen, but I think we also have political barriers to that, as we can see, you know, the, 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 regionalism isn't an out from dealing with your domestic political constraints. Uh, which, which also are a barrier to regional.